So a new company, a British company named Starlab Systems, sent out the latest product they're selling right now. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. So with no further ado, guys, let's check it out. Starlabs is a new British company that sells Clavo computers. Every model available right now in the Starlabs website is in fact a Clavo. This model in particular may look familiar to you. It is in fact the same model that System76 uses for their Galago Pro laptop. So if you were thinking about buying a Galago Pro, but you live in Europe and don't want to pay the extra customs fee for a product coming from the United States, you have a perfectly valid alternative. The nicest thing is that this laptop gets shipped in this awesome Nanook 910 heavy duty case, the same one you have seen in the intro of this video. Along with the laptop itself, they also included this cute felt penguin and also an awesome high quality Star Labs branded hoodie. These guys are really great. But let's actually check out the laptop now. The thing that immediately impressed me about this laptop is the amount of connectivity options available. You have basically every port you may possibly need here. On the left side of the computer you have your power jack, a micro SIM card slot, which unfortunately lacks the internal modem to work, a USB 3.1 type A port, the power button, yeah it's an awkward spot for the power button but it doesn't really get problematic I assure you, a microphone jack and an headphone jack. On the right side you have a USB 3.1 type C port that is also Thunderbolt 3 enabled but doesn't allow you to charge the device, another 3.1 Type-A port, a mini display port, an HDMI port, an SD card slot that is protected by this little rubber placeholder, and yeah, that's a full-size Ethernet port. This is incredibly useful, even on an Ultrabook. There are always times when Wi-Fi just won't cut it for what you need, and having an Ethernet port can always come in handy. The build quality of this laptop is pretty solid. It's aluminum all over the body. Well, it's not as thick as in other laptops, but it's sturdy enough and it feels really good to the touch. The top and the bottom are painted in this brownish slash dark gray color. Now, the brown accent isn't really easy to notice, but in my opinion, it looks very classy. The bottom part has two big rubber feet that prevent the laptop from sliding around and has a bunch of classic Phillips head screws that you can easily remove to access the internals, which by the way are fully upgradable. The only unfortunate thing is that you cannot open this laptop one-handed, in fact you have to hold the bottom part, otherwise the laptop will slide around. So talking about hardware, this laptop has a PCIe M.2 slot, a SATA slot that can house any drive with the 2.5 inches form factor and two classic SOD DDR4 RAM slots. Nothing of this is soldered on the motherboard, so you can basically take apart the whole thing and upgrade it whenever you want. This particular model they sent me comes with an Intel Core i5 7200U CPU with the integrated Intel HD 620 graphics chip, 8 gigs of RAM and a Samsung M.2 NVMe SSD with a capacity of 250 gigs. The webcam is 720p and I have to say it's pretty decent, the colors are pretty accurate. Uh, it suffers a little bit in low light conditions but it's no problem. The microphone is, uh, well, it's decent, I mean it's perfectly usable for a video conference but I wouldn't record a YouTube video from this microphone for sure. The next big thing I want to talk about here is the display. This laptop comes with a 13 inches Quad HD Plus IPS display with a resolution of 3200 by 1800. But it doesn't just end here. This screen is not only incredibly sharp, but it's also very color accurate. The color reproduction looks pretty much the same when compared to my Qnix monitor. Oh, and the panel gets pretty bright too. The only concern I have with the display is that even if it's not a touch screen, it has a glossy finish on it. In my opinion, it's pretty disappointing. The reflections can easily get in the way and adding a matte coating on it would make it so much better. Another weird thing that struck me is that the hinge doesn't open up quite as much as I would have liked. It's not really a big problem, but I think I should have let you know. The keyboard didn't look that promising from the exterior, but as soon as I started typing on it, I found out it's actually not bad. No, it's actually pretty good. I really enjoy typing on it. It has a nice tactility to it, 
and the key travel feels just right. The trackpad on the other hand is, well, a very weak point. For starters, it's tiny. Here's my Nexus 6P for scale. Being used to somewhat big trackpads, this one actually feels pretty uncomfortable to use, to the point that I had to raise the sensitivity on it. One other problem is that multi-touch gestures, such as three fingers tap or four fingers swipe, don't always get registered. And since I rely on them pretty often when I use laptop, it gets frustrating easily. This is a pretty big problem for me. Another thing that I don't like is that the click buttons are actually separated from the main tracking surface. I know many people like it this way, but personally, I prefer click pads. I'm just more used to them. The speakers are also pretty much useless here. They're small, downwards facing, don't get any loud, and the sound that comes out of them is weak and often teeny. I'm pretty disappointed here. They could have used some better speakers. If you want to consume media on this laptop, make sure you have headphones. Here's a quick sound test comparing the laptop sound to my Nexus 6P. I'm sure that if one can put these kind of speakers in a phone, it shouldn't be that hard to use at least similar speakers on the laptop. About the battery, things don't get any better. With my usual daily workflow, I get 3 to 4 hours of battery life with this laptop, which is half as much as Star Labs advertises on their website. And this is with TLP installed, screen brightness to about a half, and keyboard backlight set to the minimum. I think this is actually expected, considering the battery is only 36 watt hour. I think they could have fit a bigger battery in it by removing the useful but somewhat unnecessary 2.5 inches hard drive bay. As for performance, I have no problem getting through a light workflow of coding and web browsing, but for some more power intensive tasks, the CPU and GPU can't really keep it up that well. For one. I kind of need to use GNOME Shell as my desktop environment as I grew on it and I really can't find myself being 100% comfortable with any other desktop environment. Now GNOME Shell isn't really the lightest of desktops and to make it work as I wanted it to, I installed a patched version of Matter to improve performance along with the impatience extension to speed up animations. It is usable but it tends to stutter a bit too much for my liking. I also tried playing The Binding of Isaac on it. It's a decently lightweight game, but it slows down quite a lot on this PC, at least at its native resolution. Things seem to go better if you downscale it to 1080p though. I mean, this is no gaming machine of course, but I remember playing The Binding of Isaac on the Skylake XPS 13 with the same resolution and it was definitely better. As for thermals, this laptop doesn't get particularly hot, but if you stress it out too much, you may hear the fan kicking in. It's not too loud really, but it's definitely audible. If you do buy this laptop, you may want to apply a BIOS update that tweaks some of the fan curves to make the laptop overall quieter in normal conditions. This laptop was sent me with Ubuntu 17.04, but you can choose among many different distros depending on your preference. You can also choose to get Windows on it, but I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this video, you're not interested in this last option, are you? As you may have noticed, I installed Arginate right away as it's my favorite distribution, but I did give Ubuntu a try. And I can tell you, it's just your standard Ubuntu Unity installation. No fancy apps or any particular tweaks were applied as far as I've seen, and the only addition I found was the nice default wallpaper that I just had to bring with me when switching the laptop to Arch. It is really nice. Now, my overall impression about this Star Labs laptop is pretty good. It's a little bit expensive for what it offers, especially if you look at the battery life, but the amount of connectivity and the no efforts Linux support won me back. 
Not to talk about the screen. I mean, that screen is just gorgeous. After all, I think this is a really nice product and I think I will enjoy using it when I'm on the go. So guys, this is gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Also remember to check out the Tech Pills website at techpills.technology. You will find the link in the description. Again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.